And now it's time for the story Almost to Freedom. It's an Underground Railroad story. And there's some great illustrations written by Colin Bootman that I think you'll really enjoy in this story. Story today, Almost to Freedom. The author, Vonda Michonne Nelson, and illustrations by Colin Bootman. Starts with a quote. A doll is a witness who cannot die. With a doll you are never alone. Margaret Atwood. I started out no more than a bunch of rags on a Virginia plantation. Lindy's mama was my maker. Miss Rachel done a fine job putting me together, taking extra time to show my, sew my face on real careful with thread. They call it embroidery. I don't have no hair. Miss Rachel just made a bandana from some old cloth and tied it round my head like she wore. I used to think about having me some hair, but now it don't bother me none. When she's done sewing, Miss Rachel give me to her little girl. Lindy hugs me hard and says, your name be Sally. We gonna be best friends. From that first day when Lindy be somewheres, I be there with her. I like how Lindy holds me at night, and I don't even mind when she rolls me over in her sleep. Being Lindy's doll baby is a right important job. When Lindy and Miss Rachel pick cotton, I be there too. Lindy ties me round her waist with a rope. Now, the knot's kind of loose, and after a while, I fall to the ground. Sally, you be getting yourself all dirty, Lindy says. Now you stay put. Miss Rachel wipes sweat from her brow and shows Lindy how to tie me on tight. The overseer hollers, get up there, like he's talking to a couple of horses. He's riding over and carrying his whip. Miss Rachel and Lindy quick start picking again. The work be hard, but the long days seem a little easier with everybody swing it, singing, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Come sundown, we sit round and listen to stories about little critters fooling big ones and about slaves outsmarting masters. These are the best times, because there's lots of laughing and singing. But when folks start talking about something called freedom, their faces turn serious in the firelight. Some say you can buy freedom, but it's so dear we never heard of anybody that could. Seems the only other way to get it is to run away to a place called North. The way they talk, freedom must be a good thing. But after what happened to Lindy's papa, I ain't so sure. Strangers chain Mr. Henry in a wagon, and they take him away. Master sold him down the river, is what folks say, because he tried to get freedom. Miss Rachel, she cried and cried. Lindy, too. And she hugged me so hard, I think my insides will burst out of my seams. After that, Miss Rachel sits up at night looking out at the sky. She holds Lindy. And Lindy holds me. She rocks us singing, steal away, steal away, steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. One day, Lindy gets whipped by the overseer. She didn't do nothing except for ask the master's son how to spell her name. Well, the boy told on Lindsay, on Lindy, and Massa comes out and says, we'll make sure you people forget all about reading and writing. He makes people stop working to watch. Now, I'm tied to Lindy, but when the whipping starts, I slip out and fall. My face is on the ground, but I hear the overseer's black snake whip. I hear Lindy screaming. I hear Miss Rachel crying. And when it's over, I see the cuts on Lindy's back. While she's Dr. and Lindy, Miss Rachel whispers a prayer. Lord, don't let the master sell my baby like he done her papa. Later, Lindy sets me on a stump. Her cheeks are wet with tears. Someday, Sally... We won't be doing what the master says. We'll be going to freedom. I'm thinking, have mercy. One night, Lindy's sleeping beside me like always. Then there's whispering, and Lindy's getting her clothes on. Now, the sun ain't quite awake yet, but field workers are always up before dawn, so I don't think much of it. Miss Rachel's all dressed and telling Lindy, hurry now, but hush. Lindy grabs me up and ties me to her. The way Lindy's heart's a beating... I know something important must be happening. Lindsay takes Miss Rachel's hand and we sneak out behind our shack and run into the night. I know I ain't running, but it feels like I am. It actually feels like I'm flying. Branches, branches slap us along the way like they're scolding, warning us to go back. But Miss Rachel doesn't pay it no mind. She just keeps running. My feet, Mama, they're burrs, Lindy says. 
I know, baby, Miss Rachel whispers, but we gotta keep on. We run for a while, then we hide under the brush. Then we run some more. Lindy's breathing hard, but says, Don't be worrying, Sally. Mama says that we'll be with Papa soon. But soon doesn't come real soon. But sure enough, Mr. Henry's waiting by the river. He hugs Miss Rachel. Then he lifts Lindy into the air and me with her. Papa, Lindy says laughing. But Mr. Henry covers her mouth real quick and holds her close. Quiet now. We got to get to the boatman and cross over. We hurry along the riverbank to where the man's waiting with his boat. Without one word, we climb in. The night is dark as can be. It's dead quiet except for the sound of the boatman pushing, pushing, pushing his oars. My face soaks up little splashes of water as we glide along. On the other side, Miss Rachel squeezes the boatman's hand. Lindy's papa leads us through the night woods. We run and hide, hide and run, till we come to a house with a lantern glowing soft in the window. We crouch behind the barn. Lindy's papa calls out, Hoo, hoo, like a hooty owl. Then the lantern goes out. A white man wearing eyeglasses steps out of the dark. He motions us to follow him to the back of the house. Inside the kitchen, a woman with silver hair opens the door to a storeroom. The man lifts a rug, takes some boards from the floor, and uncovers a ladder leading into the darkness. It's small and a mite chilly, the man says, but it's the safest place we've got. He hands Miss Rachel a lantern. I put some blankets and some water down there, and I'll get you some food, the woman says. Much obliged, ma'am, Mr. Henry says, and he climbs down the ladder. The woman hands Lindy a pillow. Miss Rachel's friend, who worked in the big house, told me about these things called pillows, but I ain't ever seen one before. The secret room is tiny, but not much smaller than the shack the master had us in. Miss Rachel spreads two blankets on the dirt floor, and everybody except for me takes some water. Lindy lays me on the pillow. It's the softest thing, just like a cloud. The silver-haired woman hands down a stew pot, some bowls, some bread, and some cheese. Then she closes up the floor. Miss Rachel serves up supper. Nobody talks. Too tired. Too scared. They sop up the last of their stew with the bread. Sleep now, Papa says to Lindy and me. Lindy whispers that she is worried, but Papa says, don't worry. And afterwards, Lindy holds me close like always. She lays her head on the pillow and smiles. Night, Sally, she whispers. We almost have freedom. If I could have, I'd have smiled too. Seems like we just got to sleep and Miss Rachel is shaking Lindy. Come on, baby, quick. Why? Lindy asks. Slave catchers, Mr. Henry whispers, blowing out the lantern. Lindy ties me around her waist. I guess sleep still has her because the knot ain't too tight. Miss Rachel tucks some bread and cheese in her apron, and she and Lindy follow Mr. Henry up the ladder. They're scrambling fast, and all of a sudden I feel myself slipping, and I'm falling, 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 till I hit that dirt. Floor. Lindy calls my name. The silver-haired woman's closing up the floor. Lindy, wait! But she can't hear me, because I ain't got no voice. The board shut out the light. When the floorboards open again, sunlight shines in. The silver-haired woman, she comes down the ladder. There you are, she says, picking me up. Your little mama didn't want to leave you. She straightens my dress. There just wasn't time. She sets me on a blanket and tucks it around me. Sleep tight, she says, and she carries the lantern back up the ladder, and she closes the floor. If I could have made tears, them blankets would have been wet clean through. I want Lindy, but I know she ain't coming back. Can't. The loneliness swallows me up. I give a lot of time to thinking about Lindy and her folks, where they was, if they ever got to freedom like they were wanting. And I give a lot of time to hoping they did, and a lot of time to grieving, grieving for myself. I wish the silver-haired woman would come, but she don't. Nobody comes. After a spell, I think maybe slave catchers is watching the house. Maybe this hiding place ain't so safe. Maybe I'll lay right here for the rest of my days. By and by, a mouse scurries over my face and into a corner. It's guys glad to have the company. I passed the time listening to Ms. Mouse make herself a nest and raise her young'uns. I'm sorry when they finally go, because I get to feeling lonely again. I get to thinking that I best stop hoping. Then one day, the boards opened up and were moved. Somebody's coming down the ladder. 
If I'd have had a flesh and blood heart, it'd have been pounding like Lindy's that night we run off. I see light from a lantern, and a woman wrapping up a little girl in a blanket. The child is shivering, more scared, I think, than cold. Her eyes look tired and, and tearful. The woman picks me up and says, Willa, darling, this must be the dolly that the missus was mentioning. She blows the dust off my face and holds me close to the lantern. Mighty fine stitching on that. Can I keep her? The girl asks. Her mama nods, and Willow hugs me so hard, I think my insides will burst out of my seams. Two men come down the ladder. They talk about going north to that freedom place, their faces serious in the lamplight. When they settle in for sleeping, Willow holds me in her arms and whispers, Your name will be Belinda. We gonna be best friends. Belinda. I like that. Sounds like Lindy. My face don't change, but I'm smiling inside, remembering the crackling of the straw mattress when Lindy'd roll over me in her sleep. I sure do miss her, but I'm mighty glad to be Willis doll, baby. It's a right important job. And that's the story, Almost to Freedom.